Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hoop. And this is our regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Think Carefully Before You Act. I'm sure you've heard the English proverb, Look Before You Leap. It's an idiom used to encourage folk to take the time and think about the consequences and the potential dangers, the potential pitfalls, compared with the advantages that you'll receive before making this rash decision or any rash decision. Every decision you make has consequences. It will cost you something because nothing is entirely free. Not even our salvation because it cost Jesus everything. It cost him his whole life. It might be free to us, but it was not free to, our per or to the purchaser, which was Jesus. Jesus paid for our salvation with his own life. And that is what we're going to be talking about today. Think carefully before you act. Because again, it will cost you something. So weigh the cost and compare that cost with the benefits that you will receive. You want to get the best value for your decisions. So turn with me please to Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 through 27. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. King Solomon starts this Proverbs with, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For there are our life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. He is admonishing his hearers. He is admonishing his readers to pay close attention to what he is saying because there are not just mere words. He is not just saying these words just to sound philo philosophical or to sound wise or to sound intelligent, but what he is saying is very, very important. How important? So important that he advises us not to let them out of our sight. You know, some folks say, I'll keep that on the back burner. Well, King Solomon is saying, do not do that, but rather keep this on the front burner. Keep this in your heart so that it is ever on your mind. Why? Verse 22 tells us, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. They are life to those who find them. This word translated find means to discover, to uncover, to find out. That is, learn the location of an object according to the Dictionary of Biblical Languages with Semitic Domains, the Hebrew Old Testament. It is not by accident, it is not by default that you come by these words. The words means to search for them and then to find them and put them into practice. Only then will they become words of life and words of health to your whole body. Jesus uses an example to, to um, verify these very words, how important these words by backing up this statement when he says in Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 for what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul or what shall a man give in return for his soul Jesus is saying this the very same thing that King Solomon was saying do not put the words of Scripture on the back burner do not put them to the side and then forget about them. Or I'll come back to this later. But pay 
close attention to what I am saying. Turn your ear to the words of Scripture. But put these, these words, keep them ever before you. Keep them ever in your sight and store them up in your heart. For there are words of life, there are words of health to your whole body. If you don't put them first in your mind and you go off chasing something else like the wealth of the world, which is only temporal, it's only a temporary thing, this world and all that it has to offer is only a temporary existence. And if you ignore the words of health and the words of life, you will lose your soul, which is eternal. Your soul will live on forever. And if you reject God, if you reject his words, your soul will spend eternity in a place called the lake of fire. You cannot listen to your lion heart because it will deceive you. An erroneous teaching says that listen to your heart or follow your heart. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 9 and 10, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? He's saying the heart can act as a yes man and tell you exactly what it is that you want to hear, which can be exactly the opposite of what you really need. So verse 10 goes on to say, I, the Lord, search the heart and test the mind to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit. Of his deeds. So if the Lord searches your heart and tests your mind, does not and, and he does not find what he's looking for, which is his word stored up there, he will give you what it is you've been working for, what it is you've been working towards, what you have been saving up in your heart. If it is him, then and his kingdom, then good. If it is not, it is your choice. Because riches will not save you. None of the stars will save you. Neither rock stars, nor movie stars, or rap stars. Not even the stars of heaven. Only Jesus is, is your advocate. Only He can and will save you. This is why King Solomon said in verse 23, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. You have to make sure you guard your heart. You cannot let any and everything into your heart. You cannot let any and everything be stored up in there. It is not a catch-all drawer. It is not a junk closet that you keep everything in. It is to be pure. It is to be holy. It is a place to be stored up God's Word. For we are the living temple of God's Holy Spirit. That's why it's so important that you consider what you watch on TV or what you read in books or even what you talk about. It all gets stored up in your heart. And guess what? It'll come out of your mouth. For this is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Therefore, verse 23 in, in our scripture, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. All that you think, all that you say, all that you do come from your heart. If that is the case, would you not agree then to guard your heart is the most important thing that you can do? I would say, yes, guarding your heart is the most important thing you can do. You cannot misinterpret scripture the way that you want it to go or what you want it to say just to suit you or to suit your purpose or to support your philosophy or your worldview. You have to properly and correctly discern the scriptures. Because scripture is not subject to any private interpretation. You cannot come to Jesus one day and then live 
any old way that you want during the rest of the week or what you want to do in life. You have to make a decision. And when you come to serve Jesus, you either serve him wholeheartedly or you don't serve him at all. A true story about a pastor who had three sons and they wanted to be in the entertainment business. They did not want to be in contemporary Christian music. No. They wanted to be in worldly music, in the worldly business music. He was asked to resign from his church because his congregation did not feel comfortable with their pastor having one foot in the world and one foot in the church. This fellow was offended at the congregation because they required higher standards from their pastor. Higher standards than he was willing to give. So he chose to leave the work of God to manage his son's career and the work of whatever work they were doing. They became successful musicians by the world's standards, that is. After the world made fun of their purity rings, they took them off. Now, if they're serving the Lord, that's anybody's guess. I'm not here to judge them. But their standards on moral issues would suggest that they're do, that they do not have God's interest at heart. But that is between them and the Lord God. The moral of the story is you cannot live in the pig pen and not get muddy. You cannot expect to play in the mud hole and not get mud all over you. You have to think carefully before you act. Not about temporal things, but about eternal things. Eternity will last forever. Matthew chapter 16 verse 26 says, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Why would a man of God take his sons out of church to pursue the things of this world when this world is passing away according to scripture. Here's what John said about the whole matter. First John chapter two, verse 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the father but it is from the world, and the world is passing away along with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. This world is quickly passing away. We don't have very much time to get our loved ones saved, to get our loved ones in the church. It is not the time to take your loved ones out of the church to pursue the satisfaction of the flesh and the things of this world. Paul warned the, warned the Corinthians about this very same thing in his first letter that he wrote to them in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. Let those who deal with the world deal as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Paul is saying, do not pursue the things of this world. Do not pursue what this world has to offer because the world in its present state is passing away. Meaning the temporary will soon end. It will soon be gone and the eternal will soon begin. So again, why would you trade the eternal for the temporal when it is soon passing away? It will soon be finished. It will soon be over. The answer is you shouldn't. It's just not worth your eternity. Verse 24 says, keep your mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. That means you can't use any old language that you want. Filthy talk should never be found on the lips of a Christian. It is a disgrace for a Christian to drop the F-bomb. 
You can't act like the world, neither can you talk like the world. Stay away from coarse joking. Do not be a part of it. I saw a video a few months ago with a well-known praise and worship singer in a dispute with his own son. And the filth that just rolled off his tongue like nobody's business. To say the least, it was shocking. It was very disturbing. It was like this was his natural way of communication. It was simply unbelievable for a man of God to use such filthy language to his own children is simply shameful. It is not even acceptable for a heathen to speak to his children that way, using that kind of language, even if for some reason your relationship with your child or your children is toxic. But then think about it. What does that even mean? You have a toxic relationship with your children, but you think you could minister to my children when you have a toxic relationship with your children? It just doesn't work that way. Love the ones you can see. Love the ones you can hold. Then you can love the unseen. Then you can love those who you cannot hold. But moving on, verse 25. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. That is, make your eyes look straight ahead. Do not let your eyes gaze lustfully. Do not let your gaze fall lustfully upon another woman or let your gaze fall lustfully upon another man. Drink water from your own cistern. Also, do not envy what someone else has. For one, you don't know what they had to go through to get where they are or to have what they have. Your mission is to build up treasure in heaven for yourself. Treasure that will last forever. Your treasure there will never depreciate, nor will it run out. Neither will inflation or stagnation or deflation or any other a nation will be able to reduce your treasure up there in heaven. Verse 26. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Consider where you go. Consider what you say. Consider what you do very, very carefully. It will affect your eternity. King Solomon is saying, think about it very carefully and be steadfast in your decisions. Do not flip flop between Two decisions because those who have no regard for the things of God or for the laws of God will come against you when you stand up for what you believe in when you believe in what God believes in because make no mistake they will come against you but when you flip-flop between two opinions because the haters dislike what you stand for in God but if your desire is to be a part of them, then, and you value their decisions more than you value God's decisions, then that means that you put a higher priority on their decisions than you put on what God thinks about the matter. And that, my friend, is a slippery, slippery slope to be on. I saw a video the other day with a young woman saying that She's a bird. I saw another who thinks she's a deer. Still others who believe that they're a pack of wolves. That is not normal. That is not okay. They need help. Or at the least, they need deliverance. We're living in days of the emperor's new clothes. Everyone is praising him for his beautiful clothes when he's actually naked. He's supposed to be wearing these beautiful clothes, but because they do not want to be the ones who's called stupid or to be called incompetent or to be called haters, they praise this naked man 
for his beautiful clothes. If you stand up and say there's something wrong, they come at you full force. It's just simply unbelievable, the world that we're living in. I'm here to say that it's not okay to act like that. It's not okay to dress like that. If you're a man, talk like a man, act like a man. If you're a woman, talk like a woman. Act like a woman. Dress like a woman. That is who God made you to be. I'm telling you, think carefully before you act. Verse 27. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. This last verse says, do not turn to the right or to the left. Do not turn because neither can help you. Turn to God because all wisdom and all grace comes from Him. He is our all-sufficiency. Think about it. If it is against God, do not let someone else convince you that it is okay with God to do what God says He do not like or what God says that He hates. Do not let them convince you that it is God sanctioned when he says, no, do not do this or that. Read the scriptures for yourself. Read God's word for yourself. Familiarize yourself with God's word. He will be your guiding posts. Let his moral compass guide you. Let your thoughts and your actions be guided by God and by his moral compass. But in order for you to do that, you will need to know him personally. You will need to be familiar with his word. You will, be, be, you will need to be familiar with the Bible for yourself, not what somebody else tells you, but what you have read for yourself. So my question this morning is, do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Does his moral compass guide you? If your answer is no, but you would like it to be yes, here's how. All you got to do is to say a simple prayer. A prayer of asking for forgiveness. A prayer of repentance. A prayer inviting Jesus into your life to be your moral compass. Say this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to think morally like your morals. Help me to believe and to know your ways. Help me to live my life according to what you expect and to store up your word in my heart. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for giving me a new life, for making me a new creation. Thank you for letting all of my old self pass away and my new self come to life. Thank you for the rebirth. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer and you believe it in your heart, you're now a new creation in Christ. And let his Jesus' moral compass guide you. Let his moral compass guide your path because his path leads to life. The other path, the path of the world, leads to death. Choose life. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.